So without further ado, let's step in here and take a look at the finished project. Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today's video is five years in the making. And I know that sounds silly, but I went back and was trying to find some old footage of when I started my barn. And I posted a video, actually a couple videos of building the barn in, I think it was late 2015 and early 2016. And that was way before bear's time. And yeah, bear wasn't even thought of back then. So today's video, five years in the making and our, our barn, shop, build, renovation, whatever you want to call it, is complete ish still have some work to do on that door but it's hot and we don't have to do that in the summertime but this thing started off as a dream <laughs> as silly as it sounds i needed a place to store equipment to store stuff to to put feed a place for animals and all that and it literally took me probably close to five years to save up just to build the shell of this structure so our barn or shop whatever you want to call it the inside part here is 40 by 50 and then the shed roof on the back for the animals is 20 by 50 so the entire structure is 50 by 60 and it took me about five years to save up for it and just with the shell so with all the steel and the sheet iron and the doors no electricity no concrete no insulation all of that was about I had about $13,000 in materials and I just couldn't pay someone to build it for me. I tried. I wanted to have somebody do it because they could have it up in a week or so, but it was going to cost about $20,000 to do that. So I just made a decision to tackle this project myself. It was going to be all DIY and it was our YouTube channel was in its infancy and I really wish I would have documented the whole process of building the shell and all the welding and setting the trusses and all that. But I took a few pictures, tried to make a video back then. But like I said, we were just getting started. So let's go back in time five years and see where the barn started.
Hey guys, it's Daniel, Arms Family Homestead. Hey, I've had a lot of uh, requests to, to do a little tour of my barn. I finally finished it. <laughs> so, don't be too harsh on me. Don't make too much fun. Like I said, we were just starting out on YouTube, just trying to figure all this out and uh, was learning as we went. So this barn was never meant, when I built it five years ago, it was never really meant to be a shop. It was not gonna have concrete, electricity, or any of that stuff, it was just a storage building. But I've always been as open and honest as I could possibly be on my YouTube channel. And we just reached a point this year, 2020 has been amazing. We've been blessed beyond measure. And I, it really, I mean, I got a private message on Facebook the other day from a lady that said, did you win the lottery or what? Because you're spending so much money this year, it's insane and are, you quit your job and how's this even gonna work? Well. I'll get into all of that, but uh, I've got so much footage of this, I, and I'm just, like I said, blessed beyond measure. So with, with the shop, we decided this year to go ahead and change it from a barn to a shop, and that included putting concrete, electricity, running water, um, insulation, and all that stuff. And uh, it's been an awesome summer getting to do a lot of this work myself. The only thing we hired out so far is the concrete pad and the insulation and everything else has been DIY. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's step in here and take a look at the finished project, at least finished for now. We've got a few other things we wanna do, um, but those are just projects along the way. So as I've said before, this is a closed cell blow-in foam insulation, and it's one inch thick. So there's two types, you got closed cell and open cell. The closed cell is really, really thin and hard. This stuff is hard as a rock, but it does an excellent job of insulating a building like this. So we have our 10 foot tall, 12 foot, or I'm sorry, 10 foot tall, 14 foot wide garage door. I think eventually, I know this sounds kind of silly, but we may actually do a mini split heat and air unit up here on the wall my wife's got a brother that's in heating and air and we can get a pretty good deal on a mini split unit so i don't really know what all we're going to do it's a clean slate in here right now and we're going to do a lot of storage probably over here by the front door when you come in i've got water coming in here so we'll probably put a sink obviously some countertops some workspace benches down this wall there'll be a refrigerator I've got a plug that's on its own that's not a GFI plug. I need to put the cover on it, but that will be for a refrigerator. These are probably going to get moved. These are just a couple shelves I got at Home Depot and on a good deal the other day. Probably do some more workbenches, storage stuff, maybe a gun safe. Might have to have somewhere for all my feed, for my animal feed and everything, because the back door goes out under you know, the covered uh, area where the animals are. And then I'm thinking back here on that part of the back wall and down this side. I'm going to try to find like some, some old uh, pallet rack shelving from, from an old warehouse or something. I think pallet rack would go good in here because we could put, you know, a shelf at, at four foot and eight foot. And I think that would work really, really well. So obviously this is going to be storage for things like the tractor, lawnmower, stuff like that, the boat. But we're going to use it for a workshop and I don't know what all else just yet. But this is just... I really still having a hard time wrapping my brain around this. 
this is just incredible. So temperature wise, everybody wants to know about this spray foam insulation. So Chris, the guy that did our blow in insulation came in here, he had his scissor lift the day before he started spraying, he took a laser uh, thermometer, temperature gauge, and shot a laser on top of the, well, under the roof inside here. It was 130 degrees. That sheet iron was 130 at 10 a.m. And he came back a couple days later after he had spray foamed it and let it cool because that spray foam comes out at like 180 degrees. You can't test the temperature that day. But a couple days later, he did it same spot about 10 a.m. and it was 90 degrees. So it's significantly cooler in here. Before, by about 10, 30, 11, you, you couldn't work in here. It was just too hot. And now, if you just open up the door and turn on a couple fans, it's very, very tolerable in here. So as I said earlier, I've always been very open on this channel, and I've talked about income. I've talked about money several times in the past, and I've had a lot of people curious about what we spent on the barn. So as I said in the beginning, we spent about $13,000 on the shell to complete this um, to make it a barn, to get something place, a place dried in that we could store tractors and equipment and stuff. Now, renovating it into a shop, making it more of a workspace, we spent about $10,000 on concrete, and that was for a 40 by 50 slab. I've got about $2,500 in electrical work, but that's just because I bought all the materials myself, and a good friend of mine and I put in all of the electrical um, I had a couple bids from electricians and they were about five to six thousand dollars So we saved a lot of money there and then the insulation cost me about six thousand dollars So I've got probably It's getting warm in here. I need to get a fan on That was a lot cooler. I hope the fan not making too much noise for you guys, but so I've got ten thousand dollars concrete about two maybe three thousand dollars total in electrical because I had to go back a couple times six thousand dollars in insulation so we're pushing about twenty thousand dollars to renovate this thing and uh, you know that's that's a lot of money but like i said we've been blessed beyond measure in 2020 and you know a few people i've been getting a few complaints here and there about sponsored videos and things and people going oh you got so many sponsored videos and so many ads and all that well that's youtube this is my channel first off i can run it however i want but i'm not i'm not trying to be rude or anything but my game plan for this year guys we've been blessed beyond measure between youtube and facebook alone but i think a lot of people understand we're in a position where companies want us to promote products and if it's a company i believe in and a product that i think is legit i don't mind promoting a few things but my goal was to use those sponsorships, those sponsored videos that are just one or two sprinkled here and there, things like Simply Safe. I had a couple videos sponsored by Simply Safe or Harry's. I was letting those companies pay for this stuff. And we took a huge leap of faith this year and quit my job as a state trooper to do this stuff full time. So part of bringing in income is those sponsored videos and things. I promise you, I don't want to get to a point where we're overdoing it. I don't like doing a lot of those sponsored videos. But when you're going to spend $20,000 renovating a, a barn and turn it into a shop and a workspace that we can use for all kinds of things, why not let those companies that want to be promoted on our channel pay for things here on our farm? I don't think anybody out there in our position would do anything differently. It's just, it's just kind of how it works. So now that we've got this completed, we'll, you'll still see some sponsor videos. There's a lot of companies that I, that, that, that I really believe in. I mean, like... Great Plains Kubota, they're not actually paying us. They pay us zero dollars, but they let us use their awesome Kubota equipment. They're, they're gonna be a part of our channel for a long time, I hope. Then you got like Xmark mowers. We've got a deal with Xmark. We had a deal for like six videos this year. That's not extreme at all. And uh, they really help us get projects done here on the farm. Yeah, the mower's great, but they're a financial backer of the channel. so. There's some things doing this full time that are probably a little bit different than just doing it as a part time hobby. But I won't lie, guys, you, you subscribers on YouTube and Facebook have changed my family's life. I posted a picture the other day on Facebook and Instagram of just that tractor sitting here in the shop. And I said, never let a small minded person kill a big dream. And I'm telling you what, I started this YouTube channel about five years ago 
and I'm not even going to say I had a dream of growing a huge audience and making a, a full-time income off of YouTube, but along the way, as we learned and we built and we built a following, and I saw that that was a possibility. And as much as much as I enjoyed my career in law enforcement and my time with the Highway Patrol, I'm telling you what, having something to do this to share our life with you guys and then open up so many opportunities for us to be here on the farm full time and not have to leave 40 hours a week to go to a job to risk my life where we're in a world in 2020 where people would rather walk up and shoot you in the face than talk to you. Um, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to build this channel as big as we can to sustain my family for as long as possible. So I don't know what all the future holds for our channel and I'll, I don't know what all we're gonna do in the barn, but I do know one thing. I absolutely love getting to share my life through this little lens with all of you. And I just want to leave you with what I said earlier. Don't ever let a small-minded person kill a big dream. Because if you look around right here, the concrete, the lights, the insulation, the boat, the tractor, the x -Mark mower, none of this would have been possible if I would have listened to all the, all the crazy people years ago that said, why in the world are you walking around talking to a camera? Why in the world are you making videos about gardening? Why in the world are you making these silly videos? Why in the world are you posting? Are you going to be a celebrity or you just think you're cool? No, I didn't let those small-minded people kill a big dream. And anything is possible. Believe in the Lord. Believe that God has a plan for you. Figure out what that plan is. Pray about it. Read your Bible. Study it. Whatever you got to do. Live your passion. Share Christ with others. And don't let a small-minded person kill a big dream. And you just never know what's possible in this world. So, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you do for our family. You'll never understand how much all of our YouTube and Facebook audience has changed our life. So, guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, done-ish with the shop. But there will be a lot more work to come, making it into a usable workspace, getting all the stuff in, and, man, we've got an awesome place to spend a lot of time doing projects. So, guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And, as always, we'll see you on the next video.